really it just gets back to just making sure that I can implement at least a good portion of what you talk about. Um, you know, I, I, I try to do a lot of the stuff, you know, like the journaling, for example, um, sometimes that gets away from me, you know, mm -hmm. and then, uh, but I think that's so helpful. And so maybe yeah. just being able to understand, you know, how, how good it really is. Um, mm -hmm. And just a lot of other things too. Just making sure I implement everything daily can, can end up taking. Yeah. When, you know, here's, here's a couple things. I want to write this down. Patience. You got to be patient, man. And the other thing is I want you to develop a mantra and I would recommend you write it in your declarations daily is I correct and I continue. So one of the struggles that we run into as high achievers, Michael, is that we get knocked off course because it happens to everyone, including myself. And the old way of me, I would beat myself up, which would then, it would limit how quickly I'd get back on the path. And when we correct and continue, we just let it go and we get right back up and get rolling into it. And the key is to keep that momentum flowing. So will you start doing that in your, in your declarations is right, I correct and I continue, I correct and I continue. Say that over and over again. What, what would you say is one of your biggest victories since joining the mastermind this last fall? Uh, for sure, clarity um, and an understanding, like a, a pathway to, uh, to, to get to where. Well. Cool. Can, can I give you some feedback based on my journey of getting to where I want to go? It takes usually way more time, way more effort, way more energy, and way more money than I thought it was going to do, which means you're going to have to correct and continue more often. Because when you're not there yet, it's going to piss you off a little bit. And that's the space where Ed Milet talks about is called blissful unsatisfaction. Like you got to learn to be stoked about where you're at. And at the, un, at the same side, like have this bit of unsatisfaction that's going to drive you forward. It's going to drive you to where you want to get to. You follow me? So let's get back on. Um, oh, let me ask you this question too. What do you like most about the Mastermind of the Alliance? Um, I think I like hearing uh, from other people who are, well, for me, I like to hear from people that are pretty, you know, semi-successful, um, and hearing kind of their, their struggles along the way. Okay. Um, I, so I just like hearing what other people have to say, but if I were, I think if I were like a newer agent, I would definitely like a lot of the content. Um, and I don't know if you need any feedback yet. It would be great yeah. if I, if, if the that's my next question. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so my next question is, is what do you like least about the mastermind or the Alliance that you'd like to see different? Well, I think it's not really, I don't necessarily like it or not like it, but definitely just the ability to access the content um, in, in, cause what I think you've helped me with is focusing on what I, what I want to focus on and, and getting, you know, figuring out that journey. But then what, what do you mean accessing the content? Oh, just like knowing what I should actually be looking at and oh, okay. uh, because a lot of them are videos and for me, I don't really do well with videos. I'd like to kind of see it written out. So maybe even just transcribing videos. So did you know that some of like a lot of those programs actually have PDFs written on each module as well? Probably not. Okay. So, so if you go into, and even if you don't watch the video, you can download some PDFs. Now, I'm pretty sure the only one, I think almost everyone has, has a PDF written. The only one that might not might be the listing presentation one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess maybe just also just knowing what I actually should be looking at. Um, I, I definitely need to hop in there more. But uh, cool. You know, so I, let's I just get a lot of value out of the out of just listening to you guys and going to the events and everything. So, so this gives me a huge like place to start, and that's what one of my outcomes is with these fifteen minute calls. And I'm not gonna like have them scheduled. I'm just gonna be randomly reaching out to folks like, hey, hop on a call with me. And the idea is to help like navigate to where where you need to go next. Um, so your biggest challenge and where you're stuck is consistency. Um, what is it specifically, like you mentioned the journal, is that the biggest thing or is it prospecting or what is it? Uh, no, it's prospecting. Um, but like I, I've got some pretty big goals in, and for this year and they're actually kind of lining up maybe better than I thought already. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just going to be ending up finding that consistency see through the year and hopefully actually even beating some of those goals. Mm -hmm. But if I follow what I want to follow, then uh, I know I will. 
And that's, that's been the hard part. It's just like, once you get, you know, once you get busy, you just lose the, right. the prospect. Yeah. And as you get busier, I like to call it productive. As you get more productive, you have, you have two, two angles of your business. One is you've got a lot of time and not a ton of money to invest. The other one is you got less time and more money where you're going to start to move through that space this year, which means you've got to be a amazing at your life management, like your life, your show, your reality, which is the life management course in there. Um, if you haven't gone through have you gone through that program already? Yeah, but I need to go through it again. I went through it early. Yeah. So go through that again. And then I'm pretty sure that that has some um, PDFs in there that you can read as well. Okay. So if you haven't read the PDFs, read those PDFs. Also, the second thing, have you read the initial part of the I Love My Life journal? Have you read those first pages? Cool. So what I would do is I would, I would create a bullet point of things that stick out to you on that that you can just leave on a note card on your phone and you can pull up and review those. Cool. Then, um, so let's start there. Then the other thing is it sounds like consistency with prospecting. Oh wait, let me go back to our talking about. So, so the second thing for you is going to be make sure you manage your cash flow well. Okay. Because what happens is, is you get unfocused and busy, as you said, and you don't manage your time as well. And then you don't manage your cash as well. Okay. And that will be a deal killer because you're at the leverage stage and you have to begin leveraging this year. Okay. So have you gone through the financial freedom nation videos? Okay. So you have been through them. Now, did you take the actions like that are in there, like read the books and do those things that are recommended? So here's what I want you to do. Instead of watching the videos, go through and find out what the action items are from each video and focus on doing them. Okay. So we're going to go through life management, bullet point, bullet point, uh, I love my life journal content, and then third, do actions from FFN. Cool. Anything else specifically you want to talk to me about? Um, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm wondering, um, I just, I guess I have a question for you, uh, just mm -hmm. in terms of like, it, so like my goal for this year is to do a hundred deals. Like that's my business goal mm -hmm. is to do a hundred deals. And I've, we've got, I've got about like 35 people we're working with right now. Um, mm -hmm. that has passed, like, that's, you know, that that's grown. Um, a lot over just the last couple months into that. Yeah. Um, I know that the system that, that like I've got set up is going to be able to create to continue that. And so I actually think we can, can beat that by a little, by a little bit. So, mm -hmm. but how, how do you, I mean, what, wh how do you just make sure you can grow that? Cause I'd like to have a small team and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like how, how do I, how do I, well, well first step is you got to make sure that you get momentum moving forward, which it sounds like you have momentum and, it, and it's like, it's like you have, um, like, you know, those, those fair, not Ferris wheels, but like at the playground, those wheels that turn in a circle, what are those called? Do you remember what those are called? Like, you know what I'm, yeah, you know those, well, I can't remember what those are freaking called. Right. But if you, if you have like 50 people or 35 people on there and you start just trying to push it, it's, it's slow getting going. But if you can get everyone off and then start the wheel turning and then have everyone jump on, you can sit back and you just have to tap it every now and then, right? And that's, so, so you got momentum right now. Now you have to get the momentum, keep it going. And that happens through systems and through leverage, okay? So I think if we talked on your flag on the hill, it was about like 70, 65 or 70 deals you're gonna do and your partner do like 35 or something deals, right around there, or 40 deals. I can't remember what it was. That's gonna be your burnout stage, right? You're not gonna be able to do that many, like the, the, this idea of doing 100 plus deals a year like Ricky or Madhu is not long term. Like you can get there for temporary, but to build and become a business owner, you got to leverage yourself. So look at who, what, what do you need to leverage? What is the biggest time suck in your life right now? And I don't mean just your business. 
It could be doing dishes. It could be cleaning your house. It could be doing your laundry. It could be mowing your lawn. It could be shoveling your driveways. It could be taking your dry cleaning in. It could be like you'll get to the point if you're doing that many deals, you depositing your checks yourself makes no sense. Like you need someone to leverage those things. And if you're working with a lot of buyers, where you're really gonna struggle is showing homes. So those are the things that you're gonna have to identify. What do you need to leverage? And then start to hire out the things that are the easiest to leverage first. And get to the point where you're leveraging out showing your homes and all you're doing is meeting with new clients, negotiating contracts and getting and getting those 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 move forward. You already have a, a transaction coordinator in place? Yeah. Okay, cool. So your next stop, your next thing is to probably get uh, a showing agent slash personal aid, uh, assistant that can do the little things that pop up, like you have these things pop up in your head that you need to get done. That's what takes you off course. So if you, if you can make a list of those things as they come up, then you can delegate them out on a daily basis to your personal assistant so that you can stay focused on the prospecting and the follow-up and the, and the presenting. That's probably what's distracting you currently are those little things. Yeah, I, one quick question on that. In terms of a showing agent, do, do you know like from everybody, what's the best way to, like for a new client, do you still like show property to a new client for a couple? So I, I got to the point where I didn't. Like what I would do is I would have a presentation with them and I would go through and I'd set the expectation and I would introduce them at, at, to Garrett or now Shaylee on our team, right? I don't do as many buyers myself, but at the time I'd introduce them to Garrett and then I would say, well, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go look at three or five properties, maybe a few more at a time. Garrett's gonna show you. Right after you're done looking at homes, I'm gonna hop on a call with you, and for about 10 minutes, I'm gonna evaluate those properties. What you need to do is have access on like an MLS sheet of what homes they looked at, so you can know which ones they're talking about as they went through. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So it's all in that presentation that you create, and you can learn about how to do that better in the presentation mastery. Okay. Cool. What's your number one takeaway from this conversation? Uh, I got some, some action items. Right. So action items you can do. And here's the other thing I want you to take away. Like this call is like a mini flag on the hill in 15 minutes. When you can learn to do this on a weekly basis with yourself, like an hour, an hour and a half, that's when you become a real leader because you're leading yourself. So stick to that smart week stick to that smart day with your rpms and when you get off track with it correct and continue cool man perfect awesome we'll talk soon